Before we start today's video, I do want to give a quick shout out to HelloFresh who has sponsored today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bit of a build off on a video that I actually did a couple weeks ago. As some of you guys might know, I did upload a video on the Hype House a couple weeks back and one of the most frequent comments that I noticed in the comment section on that video, apart from just general reactions from people on the Hype House, was that a lot of people had actually expected me to talk about a member of the Hype House who I didn't actually know about until recently, whose name is Alex Warren. So as I mentioned before, the only thing that I really knew about Alex Warren in the beginning was that he was a member of the Hype House, you know, these guys. And honestly, at first when I looked into it, it just seemed like he was just another member of the Hype House and I couldn't really understand why people were commenting specifically about him and DMing me to look at him specifically. But after looking into it a bit further, I realized that there's actually quite a lot of controversy surrounding him, but it doesn't have to do with his TikTok. It actually has to do with his YouTube channel. Now, thankfully, the reason that his YouTube channel is under scrutiny is not because he's doing wildly inappropriate pranks like a certain family channel we all know about, but it's actually because a lot of people think that he's copying another YouTuber on this platform and I thought that this video could actually make for an interesting discussion on not only whether he's copying that said YouTuber or not, but also just copycat culture in general. So if you guys are interested, feel free to keep on watching. Of course, before we start today's video, we have to do this week's what he shout out and this week it goes to Cinnamon Trident who sent this video. Hey bro, don't be looking at me. Close your eyes for me, bro. If you want to get a sweaty shout out for yourself, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and DM me your favorite meme of the week on Instagram and you might get chosen. Now, before we start looking into the actual controversy and whether he's copying someone or not, I thought it'd be worthwhile to look at Alex on his own, separated from the controversy as a creator. So to give you guys a bit of an idea on who Alex is, he is 19 years old. He has, I think, around 2.8 million followers on TikTok, and I think a little over 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. He also has a merch line, so I thought that we could check that out as well. Okay, so I'm not sure what it's actually called because on his YouTube description, it says that it's called Dysfunctional, but his merch page says it's called Oof, and as one would imagine, there is indeed a t-shirt that just says Oof on it. Graphic design is also my passion. He's also got a sweatshirt with his name and some coordinates on it and apparently they lead to his hometown which is called Carlsbad which does not sound like a real place but then again there's also a place in Canada called St. Louis de Haha so I don't really think I can judge on this one. And then we've got the Alex's vlog sweater which I know most people's gut reaction is probably going to be that the sweater kind of looks like the David's vlog sweaters but quite honestly the only thing that I'm genuinely concerned about is the font choice for this sweater. Oh my dear god, Herculeno? Really? Guys, please hear me out on this one. There are tens of thousands of fonts in the world. Why would you choose Herculeno? Who chooses Herculeno by choice? Was he held at gunpoint? Like, this doesn't make sense. I am genuinely curious as to what kind of headspace you have to be in to be under the impression that Herculeno is the best font choice for your merch. It's goddamn Herculeno. Moving on from the merch though, I'm sure the most people who watch David Dobrik have been able to pick up throughout this video that he's actually the YouTuber that people are claiming that Alex is copying and I'm gonna be honest, even trying to be unbalanced here, it's uncanny. In celebration of me partnering with EA, never actually proceed, seen a they sent me a brand new the cool thing about this is that G3RS is extreme. Now the similarities between these two channels are to the point where almost every single one of Alex Warren's videos has a David Dobrik version that came out months before it. So. It's not really a surprise that a common comment on Alex's videos is something to the tune of, hey, you're copying David Dobrik or calling him a bootleg David Dobrik. But while the thumbnails and the time constraints may be similar, I thought we should watch a video or two to see what they're actually like. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, so I've been wanting to do this for a really long time. Me and Patty go way back, he was one of the first people in my vlogs. I want to do something nice because I always make fun of him for having a really shitty phone, so I bought him a brand new iPhone 11. It wouldn't be a part of my vlog if I just handed it to him. So I talked to Papa and Calvin who were gonna break the fucking phone, and then surprise him with a new one. I did this thing on my YouTube channel where I popular TikTokers kiss for the first time, and uh, this is you guys. No. No. Okay, what are the odds? If I get the same number as you guys, then you have to kiss, and if I don't, 
You get five thousand dollars. And now Patrick's gonna be launching himself into the pool with it. Go, 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 cap it. Cap it, Brian. Don't look this. Okay, so the power's out. And Charlie's walking like that. And Brian's fucking using that on what the fuck? I mean, yeah, basically the format of the videos are that they're typically five minutes and under and feature skits with friends or him setting up situations that will get a reaction out of his friend group. And I think it's worth noting that there are other similarities that Alex and David have with each other as people too outside of the videos themselves. Both of them came from shorter form video platforms and migrated to YouTube where Alex is doing TikTok and YouTube at the same time and David did YouTube after Vine died. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really sure what to make of that honestly, but I thought it was worth putting out there. Video wise though, it seems especially with the hype house gaining popularity that Alex has been trying to make videos almost identical to the ones that David used to make when the vlog squad was first getting traction on YouTube where he started to be able to use the members themselves as clickbait. Ultimately, it looks like the Hype House members are being used in videos similarly to the vlog squad at the beginning, but the main difference though is that at the time of filming those earlier videos, the vlog squad wasn't the vlog squad. They were just a friend group that was featured in a lot of vlogs, which I think is where the biggest difference between Alex and David is if we're gonna try to compare David's earlier videos to Alex's. In my opinion, and I cannot stress this enough that this is just my personal opinion, David's content just feels more authentic, and I think that's mainly because of two things in Alex's videos that feel fabricated. I mean, for starters, the degree to which he copies David's content is so extreme that it makes the videos feel less spur of the moment and more calculated. And with the hype house feeling somewhat less organic than the vlog squad in the beginning, that kind of messes with the vibe of the videos as well. I also think that this tweet from Scotty kind of ties into the vibe that people not only get from Alex's videos, but the hype house in general, it just feels more... I don't want to say forced because I don't think everyone in the hype house hates each other, but when your group is created by an X-Team 10 member, there's definitely perception baggage that comes with it. Also, I do want to say that if you do enjoy his videos, please don't take this as me thinking that you shouldn't enjoy them. It's just my opinion, and quite honestly, I do get the appeal of Alex's videos. If you're someone who likes the hype house, why wouldn't you want to see videos of them together? Especially when it's longer form content as well. Considering he's also leaning into the could-be relationships in the group, it's also not surprising that he's raking in views because fans of the hype house want to see it. So whether he's copying David for certain or not, the videos work regardless because he's taking a wildly successful method, has a popular friend group to replicate it to a certain extent with, and is doing just that. It's smart. Now before we continue on with the video, I do want to talk a little bit about HelloFresh who has sponsored today's video. Now if you've never heard of HelloFresh before, they are America's number one meal kit. How it works is you get your HelloFresh meals delivered to your door that contain all the pre-measured ingredients you need to make your meal, which means you have everything you need to create and plate your meals in just about 30 minutes, meaning less grocery trips and takeout food for you, and more delicious meals with less of a fuss. And the pre-portioned ingredients also mean that there's not only less prep for you, but also less food waste. They've got over 20 seasonal chef curated recipes, meaning that every week you'll get to try something new and they even have vegetarian options. And on top of that, HelloFresh is crazy flexible with your lifestyle, which means that if you wanna skip a week or maybe you wanna change your food preferences, you can. And now that HelloFresh is available from $5.66 per serving, you get a great meal at a great price. Personally, the main reason why I like HelloFresh so much is I'm not the best cook, which means that I typically recycle the same meals that I know how to make, but in the past few weeks since I've been using HelloFresh because the instructions are in there and all the pre-measured ingredients are in there as well, it's been a lot easier and faster to make the meals, which means I've been trying so many different dishes that I probably wouldn't have tried if it wasn't for them. And I got to say that I cooked them myself, which is pretty gratifying if I do say so myself. If you want to try HelloFresh for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com and use code CaseyAonzo10 during HelloFresh's New Year's sale for 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's code CaseyAonzo10 for 10 free meals at HelloFresh.com. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring, and let's get on with the rest of the video. Now, it turns out that Alex has actually addressed the controversy in the past. He uploaded a video back in April that says, I need to address this, and I thought it would be worth watching. And one of the most popular comments that I've been seeing from uh, haters is is that I'm trying to copy David Dobrik. And it'd be ignorant to say that my videos are not inspired by David Dobrik, because they are. But they're also inspired by a lot of the other YouTubers I watch. I'm really thankful for all you guys and how much you guys are enjoying the videos and it genuinely makes me happy. I just make videos fucking around with my friends and we don't really think much more than that. And I'm still figuring out who the fuck I am or what the fuck I am. This part kind of confused me and I don't get why he said this. Like, 
Is he gonna find out down the road he's actually a goose or something? I make my videos in the way that I interpret my life. I know me and my friends are so genuinely thankful for all of this. But to finish this video off right, uh, I just wanted to say thank you. And then after a few minutes of him not really addressing anything, he does this montage of a bunch of his friends thanking the viewers to, I guess, distract everyone from the fact that he didn't really address anything in the first place. Okay, so this is supposed to be your video where you're addressing whether you're copying David Dobrik or not. Are you? You're right. I enjoy making videos. That's not really an answer. I make videos with my friends. Okay, yeah, that's great, but why are you outside now? I am so thankful. Oh, what, now because you're on the top of the Eiffel Tower, you're not going to address it anymore? And lift off of this. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Is this all this guy's gonna do? So it's clear that he's kind of avoiding admitting that he's copying the videos. It at least seems to me that it's so obvious that you can't really I'm inspired by many creators your way out of it considering the way he titles and shoots his videos and thumbnails are oftentimes identical or at the very least borderline. I do also want to clarify here that there is a difference between copying and taking inspiration, especially considering that Alex mentions that he only takes inspiration from David in his videos as well as other creators. Which Honestly, I think it's kind of a stretch. The only other creator I can really see through Alex's videos maybe is Casey Neistat with the whole multiple switches and backgrounds and clips where he's talking to his camera, but for the most part, it just seems like a majority of his videos are just his friend group cosplaying as the vlog squad, which there isn't anything wrong with that if you own up to it, but then again, maybe I don't watch the other YouTubers that inspire his videos, and maybe I'm missing something here. In terms of inspiration versus copying, a good example of taking inspiration would be those trend videos that circulate YouTube where creators credit each other, or a situation where someone has done a popular concept and a different creator sees how well that concept did and does a different variation of it. Copying, on the other hand, is personally what I think is the case with Alex's videos because there are so many elements of his videos that feel like a David Dobrik video to the point where it feels like I'm watching a bootleg like version of his channel. I also have to admit that after looking into Alex's channel to make this video, I've started to wonder if he was added to the hype house to help give the group more of a vlog squad feel versus Team 10. You don't have to be that into YouTube to know that even when Team 10 was at its peak, they were still looked at by the general public as the less trustworthy and shadier version of the vlog squad. So considering that an ex-Team 10 member was behind creating the hype house, and I assume also helped to choose the members, it wouldn't really be a stretch to think that the thought of including Alex to help create a vlog squad vibe to help offset the Team 10 connection was an active decision on their part instead of just a coincidence. But again, this is just a theory I have, but if that was the idea though, it clearly didn't work. A lot of people have also said that they think that his mannerisms and the way that he talks are super similar to David, which I have to admit, they have crazy similar laughs, but I feel like that's more of a coincidence than anything else. Like, I'm not here to decide, hey, he fakes his voice because I don't know, I just kind of feel weird speculating that. So now that we can semi-safely come to the conclusion that Alex is copying David, we come to the real question of this video, which is, does it matter? I definitely think ethically it does matter because you have a situation where someone is going through somebody's channel and seeing what worked for them and then directly copying that without really changing it up that much. And I don't think that he really realizes how much of a double-edged sword that is because not only are you basically taking somebody's work and you're recopying it without credit, but you're also hurting your own work because your video comments are full of people saying you're a copycat. Obviously, I think that ethically it does matter because you have a situation where somebody is looking at someone else's channel, seeing what worked for them, and instead of doing their own variation of it, they're almost copying it verbatim, but at the same time, I think that it's not viewed as pressing of a moral issue because David is the one who's more successful in this situation. Like, for example, if the roles were reversed and it was David who was actually smaller, but he had been making the content for much longer and Alex came along, had more subscribers and stole his format and everything and actually got more successful than him, then it would be a lot more pressing because you have a situation where somebody gained all of that clout and then didn't credit the person where it could actually help the other person out as well who originally came up with the idea. Honestly, it just seems to boil down to an imitation is the highest form of flattery situation because, let's be honest, David Dobrik has over 15 million subscribers, which means that Alex isn't the first and definitely won't be the last person who's copying his format. And I have noticed that amongst the people complaining that Alex is copying David, a lot of people have commented on his videos saying, yeah, they're aware that he copies David, but they're also interested in the hype house and they want to see those people in that kind of format of video, so they don't really care. Ultimately, Alex just also has the advantage of being set apart from the other people who take inspiration from David because he's big on TikTok and attached to the hype house to help boost himself as well. So at the end of the day, while it might not be the most ethical or creative, it's definitely smart-ish. 
He's using something that's worked in the past and is applying it to a new group of social media people that younger users are watching. Personally, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens to Alex's channel if the high post blows up and he gets a ton of growth, or if over time he tries to change things up and make them less David-esque, but we'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, and if you want to be updated every single time I upload, you can turn my post notifications on. If you want to see more of me, you can check me out on Instagram and Twitter, which are both Casey Aonzo, and I also have a second channel, which is more like lifestyle, vlog, beauty content, so if you're interested in that, I will link it in the description box, but otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one, and thank you again for watching.